Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all, and y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on The Purge, the new movie and a screening that took place in California that resulted in two teens being killed, one of which was a TikTok star. July 26th, 2021, southeast of Los Angeles in the city of Corona, California, the Crossings Mall was hosting a film screening for the new movie, The Forever Purge, the fifth installment of a movie based on one day of the year when all crime is legal, including murder. Only six tickets were sold that night, two of which were bought by 18-year-old Riley Goodrich and 19-year-old Anthony Barajas, a TikTok star who'd amassed over 900,000 followers under the handle It's Anthony Michael. The movie started at 9.35 p.m. and at 11.45, a call was made to the police after a shocking discovery. Nothing was heard, nothing was seen. The movie ended just like any other. The lights went on and staff entered the theater to clean whatever trash had been left behind. It's then that a man and a woman were seen still seated and a closer look revealed they were both bleeding heavily, suffering gunshot wounds to the head. Police and EMS arrived on scene, pronouncing 18-year-old Riley dead at the scene, but Anthony still had a pulse. He was immediately transported to the hospital in critical condition as law enforcement investigated how a double shooting, leaving one teen executed in a seat, went unheard and unnoticed. The next day, law enforcement had yet to determine who else was in the theater that night, making them unable to interview anyone for new information, such as when exactly they were shot. Without information other than that the cameras inside of the theater weren't working the night of the shooting, a witness came forward, providing details about a possible suspect. And it was Tuesday, the day after the shooting, a search warrant was served. 10.30 p.m., Law enforcement moved in on a residence in the 19,000 block of Envoy in El Cerrito where they placed 20-year-old Joseph Jimenez in custody. During a search of the residence, a firearm and additional evidence related to the crime scene were discovered and the firearm's caliber matched the weapon used in the shooting. Joseph was later booked into the Riverside Presley Detention Center on charges of murder, attempted murder, and robbery. He's currently being held on a $2 million bail. Wednesday, only a day after the arrest of the alleged shooter, 19-year-old Anthony Barajas passed away from his injuries in the hospital. The news being confirmed by close friend Jalen Hanley, another TikTok star who shared the GoFundMe created in honor of Anthony by his sister. That same GoFundMe will be pinned in the comment section of this video. With his passing, we can expect the shooter's attempted murder charge to be upgraded to murder. And as sinister as shooting two innocent teens in the head already is, police believe this was completely unprovoked. A double murder without motive. A man watching a movie fantasizing in his mind on carrying out a brutal act of violence while sitting in the theater with a gun, waiting for the moment to strike. At this time, Joseph faces up to life in a California state prison. Now, initially, I felt that this must be another one of these crazy type of individuals that go into a movie theater and just try to shoot it up. But it doesn't sound like it happened that way. To me, it sounds like this man sat and waited and most likely waited until other people were leaving the theater, and that's when he chose to strike. Two people sat, you know how some people will sit through all the credits, be hanging out on their phone talking, and those two just happened to be those two teens, and he walked up and shot the both of them. What's interesting though, is a crazy person they have no intent other than to kill to cause harm. And usually someone that wishes to commit a mass shooting is going to shoot up the theater while everyone's in there. He didn't do that though. He just waited until he had two victims. Two people that were completely unaware that he was even there. He took them by surprise. 
But not only that, they were able to find evidence relating to the crime at his house. And if you peep game, aside from the murder and the attempted murder he was initially charged with, he was also charged with the robbery. Which means there must have been a possession that he took off of the two teens that laid in their seats. One dead, one still alive with the pulse, but I'm sure he was unable to move as he's suffering a gunshot wound to his head. So this man shot two kids, took something from them, and then decided to leave. That right there doesn't scream insanity to me. That sounds like somebody that knew exactly what they were doing. And not only did they just want to get the satisfaction of killing, but they wanted the satisfaction of getting something else from the crime itself, which was a simple possession. I'm sure it wasn't anything over the top expensive, a $100,000 chain or something like that. He probably took something petty, but it was something that the police were able to connect to the crime scene. And I say that to say this, the jury, the judge, everybody is gonna take that into consideration. Because most likely this guy is gonna try to plead insanity. Oh, I'm crazy. I was watching The Purge and it made me wanna purge. And I'm personally not going for that. I don't think anybody else will. I don't think y'all are gonna be going for that because it just doesn't make sense. I've never heard of a mass shooter stop firing at people just to take something from them. Was it a robbery gone wrong? And even that in itself doesn't make sense because of the circumstances on how it played out. Who just robs someone in the movie theater? You know what I mean? And the goal of a robbery is never to kill. Why would you want to kill? Violence does not make money. And if you're doing things illegally, the more violence you commit, the harder it is to make money illegally. Because the more of a spotlight you're creating on yourself. And I know there's going to be people in the comment section saying, you know, good, he's going to go to prison, he's going to get what he deserves. I don't think that's necessarily the case, as sad as that is to say. He's from Southern California. From what I know about California, if he goes to prison, he obviously is Latino. He's going to be rocking with the Southsiders. And he doesn't actually have a charge or an offense that would deem him bad in a prison system he doesn't have a sex crime a crime against a child he doesn't have anything like that he killed an 18 and 19 year old yeah but i'm pretty sure they would view that just the same as anything else but i can't imagine sitting inside of a movie theater watching something and then no longer being alive and I can't imagine somebody that would just have that in the back of their mind unprovoked. They're just going to pick two random people to do something like that too. But I send my condolences to the family. I am going to have the GoFundMe pinned in the comment section below if any of y'all would like to donate. And a lot of people ask, oh, if they're a celebrity, this and that, if they're a rapper, why would I donate? It's not necessarily about them. It goes towards the family. It's support. All of these things cost an insane amount of money, funeral expenses, everything else. But then not only that, it's nice to be able to have a memorial. People will say, well, why am I going to donate to a GoFundMe for this rapper who is a gangster rapper? It isn't for him. You can't think of it like that. It's for the family. It's for that man's kids. So they at least have a spot, a grave, whatever, to go and visit the person that they lost. But hey, it's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with Charlie, y'all rocking with me. Till next time.